Jumpy as me. Hey, I worked around sanitariums before. It's not so bad. I like the Coopers myself. They're the same as anyone else, only they're smart enough to admit they're nuts. Look at him. That guy sings every night, and it's making me screwy. You ought to keep him out of that recreation room after hours. Who is he? Nobody knows. Not even the guy himself. He's picked up on the streets. Amnesia case. And he went daffing. He's been here ever since. Come on, let's get a cup of coffee. Times have I told you not to interrupt my singing? Every night for seven years. So there is only one answer. Either you quit singing or I'll quit bringing the paper. I don't know what you're talking about. Did you say something? I remember now. You don't mean you remember who you are, do you? I've got to get out of here right away. Sure, sure. Only just take it easy. Let me take you to your room. Then I'll get the superintendent. description of escaped maniac just seen at 16th and Hill. Step on it, boys. That is all. Roberts. Another one of those phony leads. Our only clue, a torn newspaper containing 20 pages of news. 
of which any one item may have caused that man to become violent. Well, this is not a science. Who has an idea? Why do you keep harping on that newspaper? Maybe he just tore it up as sort of an emotional outlet. Any other clever thoughts? How do we know he's even in the city? We have no leads. Besides, we haven't any pictures to go by. The asylum never takes any. We've run down every angle, Inspector, and most of them are phony. Every railroad, terminal dock, bus line, and main offer is being watched. Now, what else can we do? Sure, and I even checked all the airports personally. That's fine, Kelly. Now you better cover all the merry-go-rounds and see railways next. Why would this man get money for airplane rides? He's been a charity case for years. Now, I want every one of you to get this. As long as that madman's loose, it means that he may strike at any time, any place. I want you men to cover every foot of ground around the asylum. Check every house, gas station, every road out of there. Some place, there's a clue. Find it. Now get to work. Kelly, you stay here. It might do you a little good to meet a real detective. Ask Mr. Chan to come in. Wait a minute. You haven't called Chop Suey in on the case, have you, Chief? No, but it's not a bad idea. And take your hat off. You can learn a little politeness from the Chinese, too. Thank you so much. The Honorable Father once say, politeness, golden key that opened many doors. All right. <laughs> Glad to see you, Charlie. I was hoping you'd drop in before you went away. Uh, yes, work finished. Return to Honolulu by midnight boat. Can't be separated from that family of yours, then. Become a habit. Like a murderer, always returned to scene of crime. <laughs> oh, uh, Sergeant Kelly. Salutations. So pleased. Sit down, Charlie. Thank you. I wanted to congratulate you on the racetrack case. That gang of racketeers nearly ruined American horse racing. A humble servant, very fortunate in stumbling on solution. Ah, oh, lucky, eh? Yes. Confucius say, luck, happy combination of foolish accidents. Well, tell me, Charlie, how did you ever happen to hit on a clue? It was so small, so obscure. Uh, small things sometimes tell large stories. For instance, very obvious here that uh, many men indulge in nervous fit. <laughs> Perhaps unfortunate assistant received dressing down on carpet. Say, how did you wise up to that? When policemen on small pay discard large cigar after two puffs, sure sign of distress. <laughs> also note uh, cigarette die in infancy. Yeah? Well, suppose you tell us what case we were being boiled out on. That ought to be easy for him. Uh, not the difficult. <laughs> Escaped maniac. Case number A469W. Morning press uh, already informed me. Torn up paper only clue. And there's the case number. Congratulations. But Charlie, do you think this paper may have any bearing on the case? Heel mark on face of beautiful lady, very significant. Ah, that not just stepped on it on his way up. Note carefully. Heel on picture before paper torn. Sure sign, man no woman unpleasantly. You're right. It's deliberate mutilation. I tell you, the dame is cold turkey. I saw her at the upper house yesterday, and she knows nothing about him. Yes? Madam Lily Rochelle to see you. Have her come in. Yes. Inspector Regan? Yes. I'm Madame Rochelle. This is Monsieur Borelli. Enchanté. How do you do? Uh, Sergeant Kelly, you know. And Mr. Chan. Mr. Chan? You here on the mainland? This is a delightful surprise. Plum tree blossom any time since I hear silver voice of Madame Lily in Honolulu. Thank you. Mr. Chan, I'm in frightful trouble. Someone has threatened my life. They're going to kill me. They? Who's they? My dear inspector, Madame Rachel expects you to find it out. Show him the card you have received. Someone sent me a huge basket of flowers at the theater today. This was attached to it. Won't you sit down, Madame Rochelle? Thank you. Perhaps you're right, Charlie. Our madman does know Madame Rochelle. I told this officer that I do not know your escaped maniac. Madame meets many people, but she usually avoids the mad ones. Do you suspect anyone? No, none in particular. Naturally, a person in my position makes many enemies. There are all people who are jealous of me. Others even imagine they're in love with me. And, of course, resent the fact that I do not return their regard. It's the price of popularity. Madame is a great favorite. But there's no one you can actually point to? No. 
But I am afraid, Mr. Regan. I demand protection for Madame, not only for herself, but for the sake of her public. The voice they love must not be stilled. You will give her a guard. Just what is your connection with this case, Mr. Borelli? Enrico is the baritone of my company and one of my dearest friends. All right. The opera house will be searched and men stationed at every entrance and exit during the entire performance tonight. Thank you. And of course, Mr. Chan will be there. Madam's voice, like Monastery Bell, when ringing, must attend. You're so kind. And now I must hurry. I have costumes to be fitted. Come, Enrico. See you later, Mr. Chen. So happy. I don't like that guy, Borelli. I think he uses perfume. Inspector Regan's office. That's right, Mr. Whitley. She just left here. And with Borelli again. Do you want me to go to the opera house? No, it isn't necessary. I have other ideas. One dozen American Beauty Roses to Velvetine Apartments. Miss Lotus Quang Toy. Uh, that will be three dollars. Uh, Miss Lotus, evidently Gilded Lily. Pop, you got here just in time. How about a little advance on my allowance? I'm almost broke. Poppy love, very expensive pastime. Oh, gee, Pop, we're leaving tonight. And this is just, well, sort of a farewell present. She's a lovely girl. She's a... Graceful as bamboo shoot. Beautiful as Blossom of Water Lily. Yeah, that's her. What did you meet her? Never. But long time ago, used same description for Honorable Mother. Roses in romance, like tenor in opera, sing most persuasive love song. You like the opera, eh? Such a beautiful music. Rigoletto, il trovatore, pagliacci, cavalleria. Pardon, please, uh, Opera season good for flower business. Sure, today stands right there. Signor Barelli, the great baritone, he ordered three dozen the American beauties for the signora. Signora? You mean uh, Madame Lily Rochelle? <laughs> no, no, he's got wife himself. And no one send flowers for Madame Lily? Today, no. But tomorrow, maybe bushels for her magnificent voice. Oh, when she sings, thank you so much. Uh, please, uh, you send card with flowers? No, just cancel the whole thing. Hey, Pop! Ah, oh, gee, Pop, why can't I go to the opera with you? Impossible. You were very busy tonight, finished packing baggage. I did it all an hour ago. They're all ready to be locked. Must get uh, steamship tickets. Here they are. We well, must pay hotel bill. Here's a receipt. Now we let me go. Uh, first return three dollars for flowers not sent to Miss Kwong Toy. I, I guess I forgot that. Please, do not need soup and fish. Have other plans for you. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Moving, please. Tickets, please. Have your tickets ready, please. Thank you. Tickets, please. I'm sorry, boys, but no reporters allowed in the theater tonight. I know, Pop. We're late. Traffic jam. I tell you, nobody can see Madame Rochelle tonight. Officer, this is a private matter, and it's important. Please let us in. Good evening, Madame Borelli. Pop, what time did my husband leave the theater this afternoon? Why, right after dress rehearsal. With Madame Rochelle? No, madam. He was alone. What's he paying you to lie? Why, madam. Who was that firecracker? Anita Borelli's second soprano. The wife of Borelli, our baritone. Kind of jealous, eh? Did you ever see a baritone you could trust? <laughs> <laughs> What's the 
idea. Can't you take no for an answer? But I know she'll see me. I'm her... Saw oh, what? A strange man, hiding in here among the costumes. I was working on Madame Lily's dress. I went over in that corner for some lace. There he was standing, staring at me. Did you see him? No, Agnes screamed and I ran to her. No one else was in sight. What'd this guy look like? All I could see were his eyes. They were horrible. Take a look around, boys, and this time find him. Did you see anybody? No, I didn't see anybody. Oh, him. maybe she just imagined it. Oh, no, I didn't. I saw him all right. Now, well, just leave it to us, sister. We'll take oh, care of everything. Right. Get out now, get out, all of you. The curtain's going up in a few minutes. Now, don't worry, lady. He won't come in here again. <laughs> don't leave me alone, Arthur. Shut up. You've got the whole company upset. You cops would make anybody hysterical. Say, who are you? My name's Arnold. I'm stage manager here, and this opera is going on tonight, even if Frankenstein walks in. Which one of you... What's the trouble, Sarge? It's one of these guys, and I can pick him out. He's a Chinese. Yeah? Well, line up here. Now take off those tin hats. They're all Chinese. Here. You did. Oh, you're one of those boys who know all the answers, huh? Come on, take your hands off her. Listen, young fella, she's lucky I haven't got the bracelets on her. But we haven't done anything. We only wanted to see Madame Rochelle. It means everything to us. Well, it means nothing to me, lady. I've got my orders. Come on. Now, I don't know how you got in, but this is the way out. Why don't you let us explain? Please. Officer, take him out of here. And if I see you again tonight, you'll be doing the explaining to a judge. This place is driving me spooey. Where's Regan and his pal, um... Egg Boo Young. Here, please. I'm sure glad to see you, Chief. What's the trouble? Well, in the first place, we have already heard of ghostly visitor from man who would tend dog. Oh. Have you searched the entire house? We've been over this joint so many times, I could tear it down and build it over again without misplacing a brick. Perhaps may be called on to do same. Suppose we start systematic investigation. Look here, Weaver. You can't talk to me that way. Really? I've warned you before to keep away from my wife. This is the last time. But perhaps I'll really... see you about this later. Now get out. I want to talk to you. I thought he were dead. Dead? That's what everybody thinks. What? What are you doing here? Why shouldn't I be here? I've work to do. Gravel sings tonight. Don't move another step. 
you want to tell them that I'm here, but nothing can stop Gravel from singing tonight. Carnival! My greatest role. The voice of Mephisto coming from the flames. Flames! That was it. Flames all around me. The theater on fire. And someone locked Gravel in his dressing room. Who? You know? Tell me. Anita! Anita! If you tell them that I've come back, I'll... No, 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 I... I won't. Anita! Come in. Hello, dear. This is Mr. Chan, the detective. Madame Barrette. So pleased. And sorry to disturb. What can I do for you, Mr. Chan? In humble role of investigator, seek information concerning flowers sent to you this afternoon by honorable husband. Flowers? You, you must have felt very guilty about something, Enrico. Don't tell me you have forgotten our wedding anniversary. I had. And I didn't receive the flowers. A bouquet, like some tourist on wrong train, evidently suffer switch in destination. I can imagine what their destination was. You'll have to excuse me, Mr. Chan. I have a very difficult makeup. We'll question you later. What's all this about? The most mysterious. Someone send your bouquet to Madame Lily with threat of death. With a death threat? You suspect enemy who might do same? No, but whoever it was must have had good reasons. Evidently, do not waste love on Madame Rochelle. Why should I? She's done everything to humiliate me, even to stealing my husband. The entire company knows it and laughs at me. So sorry. Disloyalty of a husband, sometime ample provocation for revenge. But I didn't send that note, if that's what you mean. The flowers were never in my room. Contradiction, please. What are you doing? Cremated ghost of card from flower shop. I know nothing about that. You'll... you'll have to go now, Mr. Chan. Thank you so much. Alone. Now listen, Inspector. I've never been a violent man, but if you don't stop this lunkhead couple of yours from chasing my soldiers around, I'll, I'll, I won't be responsible. All right, I know. Quick. Here's your cue. Go on, enter. There's the Chinese mug I've been looking for. Kelly. What's that, a laundry ticket? Much laundry, but all dirty. Dear Pop. Pop, say, is that your kid? Chipped off ancient block. Somebody hiding in opera house. Madam Lily and husband in big fight. Also have fingerprints you ask for. Say, if that's your son, who are all the other Chinese? Honorable fraternity brothers of worthy son. Incognito.
hydrochloric acid, please. And here's the ferrocyanide potassium. Marriage of two acids reproduce lost writing on burnt card, if lucky. Have uh, fingerprints you mentioned a note? Sure. This is Mr. Whitley's. I'll bet he's wondering where he lost it. I almost got caught lifting this out of Mr. Arnold's vest. This is Madame Borelli's. What's the matter, Pop? Uh, lose something? <laughs> Not yet. But light fingers of number one sound most alarming. <laughs> Gee, Pop, we've got it. This proves the flowers were in Madame Borelli's dressing room. Madame Borelli's fingerprint, please. Fingerprint on card, not hers. You wouldn't dare do such a thing. Sorry, Lily. I've given you your last chance to make a fool of me. You can't prove anything but your cheap insinuations and lying detectives. If you name Enrico in a divorce action, he'll deny everything, and so shall I. But Ellie will deny nothing when I get through with him tonight. Tonight? What are you going to do? Madame Rochelle, two minutes, please. All right. I must go. I'll wait. What's wrong? You should be on the stage. I must talk to you. Quickly. Madame Rochelle! For the sake of Puccini, Verdi, Wagner, and me! Get on that stage! I'll see you after the first act. You! Yes, Borelli. I have come back to take your place tonight. Get out of here. Get out of here, I say. If it's the dead you're afraid of, don't worry. I'm alive, even though I was locked in a burning theater. I didn't do it. I swear I didn't. It was all a mistake. Lily. Yes, Lily. Two minutes, Mr. Ferrari. <laughs> Scene with Mephisto. He joins her in a duet. She refuses his love and he stabs her.
Dilly. Mr. Arnold, Mr. Someone bring me a chair, quick. I've had... What's the matter? Something's wrong. What happened? I don't know, but she must have been unconscious when I picked her up on stage. I'll bet Borelli had something to do with this. Hey, you. Come on, boys. Just saw him come in here. Yeah, he must have bumped himself off. Contradiction, please. Observe. Implement of death missing. Dead hands cannot hide knife. You're right. Someone must have been waiting in here to kill him. Whoever it was certainly worked fast. He had to commit the murder and escape while we were breaking in the door. Hey, one moment. Examine Wooden, please. It's beginning to dry. Coagulated blood denoting murder committed some time ago. Oh, yeah? Then I suppose it was his ghost that socked me. Perhaps substitute devil sock honorable colleague on chin. Ah, you're just guessing, brother. This window hasn't been open so long, the bolt's rusty. And that door was locked on the inside. If he didn't sock me and then run in here, where is the guy who did? Uh, perhaps murderer knows other way of departing from room. Inspector Regan, there's a trap door up here. I'll handle this. Go up there with him and take a look around. Healy, get the coroner down here and tell the boys to keep their eyes open. Yes, sir. All right, folks, back up. Out of the way. Out of the way. Wait, wait a minute, lady. You can't go in there. Let me in. Let me into him. He's my husband. Oh, I'm Rico. Oh. Oh. Find anything, Kelly? Nothing yet, Chief. There ain't nobody up here. But I'm going to find out if there is. No Chinese cop's going to show me up. Take a look down that other end. Who's he? I don't know who he is, but I'm going to find out what he's doing in here. Get Regan. What's wrong? Lily. She's dead. What's the trouble? Murder. And here's your man. That's a lie. I came in here and I found him standing over the lady with blood on his hands. There's a dame with him, too. She must be around someplace. Go and get her. Keep your eye on him, Dogan. Stabbed. Just like Borelli. Yes, but Borelli died first. Blood here still fresh. He must have come in here while I was out phoning for a doctor. You leave Madame Lily alone? Why not? She was supposed to have police protection, wasn't she? It's your negligence that is responsible for my wife's death. That's enough, Whitley. Please. Mr. Whitley is right. Humility only defense against rightful blame. Here's the knife. He must have put it there. I never saw that knife before. Whoever commit crime, safe for a moment. What do you mean? By handing knife, you have covered fingerprints of murder. Come on, 
everybody into your second act costumes. Well, come on, hurry up. Hurry up, all of you. Are the understudies ready? Yes, sir. We're not going on, Mr. Arnold. Not with a madman loose in the house. Well, two people have been killed already. Any one of us may be next. Don't you realize this is opening night and there's a packed house? You might as well go on with the show because none of you hams are leaving the theater until this thing is cleared up. I knew Madame Borelli very well. I was with her this afternoon. What time, please? Oh, about four or five o'clock. He's lying. At 4.30, my wife was in Inspector Regan's office. Pardon, please. How do you know that? Why, Lily told me, of course. You knew Madame Lily received threat of death this afternoon? Certainly not. What did you think she was doing in my office? Why, she told me she'd missed a piece of jewelry from her dressing room. Be so kind to explain what happened when you carry Madame Lily into dressing room. I laid her down on the chaise longue. Then I sent Madame Borelli to get some smelling salts. While you remain alone with Madame Lily? Yes, but I immediately went out to call a doctor. So sorry to trouble. That's quite all right, Mr. Chen. When you returned to dressing room, what happened? I didn't return. On my way back, I... I was told my husband was dead. <laughs> no longer necessary to remain. Thank you so much. What's the use of all this questioning? Here's a man you want. I demand his arrest. Please, voice from back seat. Sometime very disconcerting to drive. Kindly explain blood on hands once more. Oh, well, when I came into the room, Madame Lily was halfway off the couch. I started to lift her up, and then I realized that she... Do you expect us to believe that? One moment. Explain purpose of visit, please. I'll explain that. I'm Lily Rochelle's daughter. That's the most ridiculous yarn I've ever heard. My wife had no daughter. She'd never even been married before. That isn't true. My mother never acknowledged me openly. Ever since I can remember, I've been kept hidden away in boarding school. Even when I grew up, it was always the same. She was afraid a grown daughter would hurt her career. I tried to be close to her, but she wouldn't let me. And now it's too late. Still have not explained urgency of visit here tonight, Mr. Childers. We wanted Madame Lily's permission to get married because Kitty is underage. You asked consent before? Several times, but she always refused because she knew that our marriage would expose her secret. She even threatened to send Kitty away where I could never see her again. That was cause of quarrel? Well, she had no right to spoil Kitty's life. And so tonight we came here to ask her permission for the last time. And when she refused, you killed her? I did not. Please, spare feelings of bereaved young lady. I'm going to hold you both for further investigation. One more question. Can tell present whereabouts of male parent? My father died in a theatre fire when I was about four years old. He was an opera singer. Thank you so much. Excuse, please. Nothing up here. Uh, nothing anywhere. Mac. 
right. Now you do it. place committed a murder. Quite possible. She? What about Mr. Whitley and, and Madame Borelli? They had reason enough to do it. Also possible. And that's fellow Childers. Please. Men who ride on merry-go-round often enough finally catch brass ring. What's your idea, Pop? I have here a very interesting newspaper item relating death of Madame Lilly's first husband, Gravel, in Opera House Fire in Chicago. Gee, Pop! If there was only a picture of him. Get Los Angeles bulletin on phone. Information, please. Smitty, Chicago Sun speaking. The Gravel picture is coming through. Okay, Smitty, we're standing by. It'll only be a minute now, Mr. Chan, while they regulate the speed so that the roller holding the picture in Chicago is revolving at the same rate as the roller holding the negative in this cylinder. Here it comes. The two machines are now locked together as one. A small light is traveling over the picture in Chicago. It's an electric eye that tells this electric eye over the wire what it sees. Then this electric eye prints on the negative in this cylinder in black and white what it sees in Chicago. I'll have it developed immediately, Mr. Jan. Many things now clear. Thank you so much. That's him. You sure? I'll never forget those eyes. Who is he? For present. Mr. X. The opera's over. Must insist. No mention of picture to anyone. Not me. Here, I must take this stuff. Well, I'm not glad to get out of here. You and me both. I've never had this a night in my life. Now must work fast. I have only 30 short minutes to trap murder. Why 30 minutes? You must catch boat for Honolulu. Please stop worrying, dear. I can't help it, Phil. I can't help feeling that our coming here tonight had something to do with it. How could it? I don't know. But that detective sensed it, too. That's why he accused you. I'm not worried, honey. Everything's going to be all right. And, young lady, I'm taking on a new job today. Trying to make you happy. 
better. <laughs> You're going to keep on smiling, too. I'm going to make you forget there ever was such a thing as trouble. Inspector Regan wants to see you, Charter. Bill. I won't be long, honey. I'm not going to hurt you. You are Kitty Gravel. I knew you a long time ago. Please don't come any closer. You're afraid of me, aren't you? Don't be. I want you to know me. I... <laughs> Please. Now listen. Don't you remember this? means nothing to you. Wait. Try to remember. There was a house and a garden. And a little girl who'd run to the window to listen when I played to her. And when I'd sing, she'd fling her arms around my neck and put her head on my shoulder. If you touch her, I'll kill you. Pardon intrusion, please. Had no intention of harming beautiful young lady. Why did you come here? Merely wished to make telephone call. Excuse, please. You're lying. You're one of the police who are after me tonight. You wanted to trap me, but I was too clever for you. You thought Gravel was a fool. That's what Lily and Borelli thought when they locked me in a burning theater. But I got out, and now they're dead. You'll never put me behind those walls again. Remember presence of honorable daughter. She didn't know me. She's afraid of me. She thinks I'm mad. Everybody thinks I'm mad. A very old Chinese wise man once say, madness, twin brother of genius, because each living world created by own ego, one sometime mistaken for other. Your world, music. Yes. I live in a world of music. Symphonies, operas, great audiences. I sing to their applause. Much applause tonight after beautiful aria. Always. Would grand privilege of hearing magnificent voice again? You mean tonight? Here? Yes. We'll have stage ready and orchestra waiting. Yes. I'll sing, 
You don't expect everyone to stick around here while you turn a nut loose on that stage, do you? What do we tell all these people? Very simple. Say Mr. Arnold trying out new baritone. But Charlie, you can't do that. The man is mad. He's a homicidal maniac. Therefore must use utmost precaution. Hope plan will make murderer reveal self. Reveal self? Who do you think's been doing all the killing around here? And now you want him to sing again. Old Chinese proverbs say, Sing Jong Kong Chu. Luan Tsua Wu Tu. Oh, yeah? Hmm. Excuse, please. Why, yes. I can sing Lily's role, but under the circumstances, I... So sorry but hoped for assistance to apprehend murder of husband. I'll do anything you ask, Mr. Chen. But I won't be able to wear Lily's costume. Own costume is sufficient. Thank you so much. What's the idea of making us get into costume again? Agnes, Agnes, give me Madame Morelli's costume right away. Are we ever going home? Is this going to keep up all night? Here. Where's the bell? If it isn't there, I don't know where it is. Here. Take this. It'll do. Oh, hurry up. Let's get it over with. This was place you occupy when Madame Lily on stage? Yes. I'm pleased to remain here while Madame Borelli sing. Very well. Thank you. If that Chinese dick knows where he is, why don't we grab him and haul him down to headquarters? Unwise officer who eat apple not yet ripe get official tummy ache. The commissioner will certainly make the fur fly if anything goes wrong. And bouquets fly, if everything go right. Well, I'm all ready, Mr. Chan. Shall we go on? Please. Keep the stage lights full on. We're taking no chances. Yes, sir. <laughs> You fool. See him is played in shadows.
I knew he was hiding in the theater. He came to my dressing room before the opera. But I, I didn't dare warn you, because he said he'd kill me if I told. And then when I, I was singing Lily's aria, and he reached for the knife, I, I couldn't stand it. Hey, Fu Young, the guy that pulls rabbits out of the hat, sending a woman out there to let a nut stick a knife in her. Well, Chief, that about closes the case. Contradiction, please. Case still wide open, like swinging gate. What do you mean? Grabel, not murderer. Oh, not Grabel. Grabel. Excuse, please. We'll demonstrate hypothesis. What? Uh, word of Greek derivation. Hypo meaning... Hypo. Ha! <laughs> I get it. He's hitting the pipe again. Go on, Charlie. Knife worn by Gravel. Observe. Coating of oil. Used by property department to preserve blade from rust still intact. So what? Prove most elemental fact in deduction. Could not have been used for murder. Of course he didn't use his own knife. He used Borelli's. I beg to differ. Knife used to murder Borelli. Later used to kill Madame Lily. If Gravel guilty, must have had both knives on person while singing aria. Previous examination of costume disclosed no telltale bloodstains. Also, Madman would not use Borelli's knife having one in his own scabbard. He was crazy, wasn't he? But method devised by real murderer, born in rational mind. Used presence of maniac in theater as perfect alibi to cover own guilt. Concealed murder knife after first crime, fearing fingerprints. Later, frightened by immediate arrival of police after second crime, was forced to hide same in bouquet of flowers. Unfortunately, fingerprints obliterated by Mr. Whitley. Do you mean to insinuate that... Pardon, please. Have special insinuation for your honorable attention. Can explain presence of your fingerprints on ghost of card from flower shop found in Madame Borelli's dressing room? My fingerprints? That's impossible. Fact most definitely established by comparison with those found on your cigarette case. What about it, Whitley? I can explain that, Inspector. I knew Braley had sent flowers to the theater this afternoon. I suspected they were for my wife. I came here to see the card. Then sent same flowers to wife with threat of death? Yes. But I swear I never intended. I only wanted to frighten her away from Borelli. You know Gravel? I never heard of him. You state complete truth about position in wings during entire aria? Yes, and I can prove it. Madame Borelli saw me standing there. Will corroborate, please? Why, I... I don't know. As I came off the stage, I was so terrified at the thought of Gravel being loose in the theater, I hurried to my dressing room and locked myself in. But you must have seen me. You were standing in the wings, only a few feet away from me. Why, yes. I saw you there, Madame Borelli. You left just after Mephisto began his aria. Thank you so much. Fact that Madame Borelli in wings during aria, final link in chain of evidence. You are murderous. You were only one who knew Gravel planned to sing Mephisto role tonight. Later, standing in wings, recognized voice, not that of husband. Instinctive curiosity forced you to husband's dressing room to investigate. You discover him unconscious, so avail self of perfect opportunity to avenge intrigue, which caused you so much humiliation. Is this some ridiculous attempt to save your face, Mr. Chan? Humble countenance, merely facing facts. That same belt you wore with costume earlier tonight? Why, no. The wardrobe department sent me this because the clasp on the other was broken. Strange. Have original belt here with clasp in most perfect condition. Where did you get that? Found hidden in cushion of shades long in your dressing room. Observe. Stain of blood on the inside lining. Prove definitely you concealed knife on person after murder of husband. You're right. And I used it on Lily when I came back with the smelling salts and found her alone. You knew what was going on, but you weren't man enough to do anything about it. That's all. I'm ready, Inspector. 
May I see you, Mr. Regan? Certainly. That fellow got a lucky break, Inspector. The bullet never touched the brain. In fact, it may relieve the condition that's been causing amnesia. You think Gravel have a happy chance of recovery? An even chance, if we can keep him quiet till we get him to the hospital. He's very restless. Keeps repeating the name, uh, Kitty. Excuse me. Request most charitable act. Innocent man, unfortunately wounded by impetuous marksman, called for daughter not seen for many years. Would please take place a missing loved one for a small moment? Perhaps save life. Please? Much better if relationship not known until recovery is certain. Well, Charlie, I... All I can say is that you have Very certainly... Very lucky in finding a solution. Proving, as said before, luck, happy combination of foolish accidents. <laughs> You're all right. Just like Chop Suey. A mystery, but a swell dish. <laughs> Thank you so much. By the way, Charlie, I didn't quite catch that Chinese lingo you sprung on us just before you asked Madame Borelli to sing. Ancient proverb meaning when fear attacked brain, tongue waved distress signal. I get it. You made her sing with Carvel just to scare in the talking. Yes. You catch quickly. Sure. Hey, Pop! Pop, I found Madame Borelli's smelling sauce in Madame Lily's room. This proves that she... Excellent clue, but like last rose of summer, bloom too late. <laughs> also fear too late for boat to Honolulu. Not if we can help it. I'll hold that boat if I have to lock the captain on his own brig. <laughs> I knew we were on the right track, Pop. The first time I saw Madame Brelli, I was sure she was guilty because... Case now closed. 